Hey, welcome to JG3 Reviews. I'm James, and today I am going to put another pin in that map for my Pins Around the World collection. This one was sent to me by a great friend who uh, is helping me fill that map in a little bit on a couple of places. This one comes from Pakistan, which was not even a place I was looking at yet on the map, uh, but it's really cool to be able to tick that one off. So this is the Ducks 240 uh, fountain pen. It's an aerometric pen, but it also has kind of a unique nib. So let's go ahead. I'll show you what I like about the pen, uh, how the pen functions, and whether or not I would recommend it. But uh, stay tuned for this nib. This one's kind of interesting. Let's flip that camera and take a closer look. All right, so let's take a look at the Ducks 240, an unusual pen in the U.S. market. This is just not something that uh, you can just go out anywhere and get. You're going to have to go online and track one of these puppies down. They're not expensive when you do, uh, but a, uh, a, a more difficult to find pen for sure. So you have a stainless steel cap, and uh, you have the Ducks logo. The finish on this, I can't tell if that'll wear off quickly or not. It kind of looks like it might, but it has this stripe around the barrel. And then good typical steel uh, clip works and functions well. And you have this plastic ring at the finial and then just a plain silver insert. You have a green plastic barrel, which this green reminds me of a hero green, uh, very similar color. And this little trim ring and a plain finial at the bottom of the barrel with a little injection molding uh, mark there. So there you go. That's, that's the pin on the outside. Remove that cap and we'll see what I'm talking about about this unique nib. Now there is a Wingsung model that looks like this and I think there may be even a Hero pin that looks something like this. So it's a semi-hooded triangular steel nib and very interesting look. It does have this metal insert so that when you're gripping the pin, you can align the nib. I always like it when pins have that, when they're hooded or semi-hooded. Um, it is helpful. Metal trim ring here, and it is an aerometric filler. So you've got, as you can see, clear plastic feed section there, uh, and then the uh, silicone sack inside the metal aerometric feeder. Now this does not have ink in it yet, so if you're not familiar, all you do, you put it in the ink, you press this several times, probably several times, uh, to uh, fill up the pen with ink. I'll do that here in a second. But the nib, let's take a look at that. To me, this is what makes the pen uh, interesting, is its location and that that nib. As I mentioned, there there is a Wingsung model, I've forgotten the number, I'll put it up on the screen, that is similar to this. And a, uh, a hero I think I've seen before that looks like this. Always reminds me, see if you don't see it, a bit of a duckbill platypus of a pin. That, that nib is just interesting. So as you can see, it has a plastic triangular feed, very flattened grip section, it's, it's, it's flat, and wide. It feels though, to me, when I hold it, it just kind of feels like a, a traditional section, even though it looks much different. My index finger rests on a flat part, but my thumb is on a rounded and my other finger is rounded, so it it feels fairly normal. It doesn't feel like a triangular grip or anything like that, uh, and it's not. So, depending on your grip, you may not even really notice the less traditional shape of that section. But that nib is a surprise to me. Not because of the shape, but because of the way it writes. So when we get into the writing test, uh, I, I was surprised. There is the duck's name stamped, just stamped into that nib, which you can see is just a folded steel rather than curved. It's kind of an interesting way to make a pen. I'm not sure. Maybe ease of manufacture might be the primary motivation for making it that way. Maybe if you know, there might be an engineer here that, that knows or a well-informed person, you might share that in the comments. But an interesting shaped nib. All right, I'm gonna fill this pin up off camera and then 
do a writing test and see how does this duck's pen actually write because I think you're going to find it interesting. Again, this is the duck's 240. It doesn't say on the package, which I forgot to show you, at least in a language that I could read, <laughs> whether or not it is fine or medium. I'm going to call it a medium. And uh, that's kind of an unknown, but I'm going to call it a medium because that's really how it writes. And it's a good, smooth medium. This is Lamy Blue. Now, one thing about this pen that I find is that it is quite smooth, not bad at all, but I'm gonna be quiet and write a little bit and you can see what you think. Smooth, not a lot of feedback. You hear a little bit uh, that sounds like some pencil-y feedback. That's a function of the nib and the paper both. Uh, but as far as feeling, all I can tell you is that this pen is, is quite smooth with just very, very slight feedback. Not even pencil, nothing that strong at all. And if I were gonna compare it to something, this was my first impression and my impression every time that I've written with this pen, I would compare it with the way that a Parker Jotter writes, uh, I can't do that and talk at the same time, with the way that a Parker Jotter in medium, very, very similar, or a Par Parker Vector. Both those pens I have in medium, and they really are very similar in feel to this nib, even though really quite different. Uh, it's a wet writer, smooth writer, good saturation on the ink, consistent flow, I've had no issues with it whatsoever. Um, it is aerometric uh, filler, which is not my favorite, and uh, but that's not really a fault of the pen. That's just my own pickiness. And one of the reasons is I can't get it very full. Uh, but most of my aer aerometric pens, it's the exact same thing. So uh, that's just the way those work, and that's why they don't tend to be my favorite. But I've had no problems with it. No leakages, no problems, no dry starts with this pen. Uh, when I've had this pen stopped writing, it's because I am out of ink. And I did use it quite a bit in one of my classes in particular because I uh, was really just kind of putting it through the paces, but I really enjoy writing with the pen. It's an inexpensive pen, meant to be a daily writer, a school writer, that sort of thing. That's, that's what it's for. And I think in that role, it does really well. Uh, kind of an unusual look, and it almost looks like something that has stepped right out of the 60s or 70s, uh, but for me, that's part of the charm as well. So, you know, as a just a normal pen and that range of pens, you know, I like it. It, it writes well, and, it, and I, I really like this unusual nib. What's the platypus on that cartoon? That's It just reminds me of that cartoon character. Kind of funny. Anyway, this is what I would say. I find it to be smooth, about like a Parker medium. Uh, it has been for me, it's been reliable. It's well saturated, that's one thing. And uh, comfortable to write with. Like I say, I wrote a lot of notes in a class pages and pages of notes with this one. And I just was was uh, really surprised with it. The one funny thing about it, that nib, semi-hooded hooded nib, it has an, just a slight, I don't know if you can even quite tell, a slight upturn to it. And so a couple of times when I first started writing with it, I looked at it, I, th I thought I'd been it. <laughs> it didn't, the lines didn't follow right to my eye uh, from the section to the nib. And I actually thought that I had accidentally bent the pen, but that is not the case. Let's do a size comparison. It, it writes well, and it's been reliable, and, uh, you know, I would I would say, you know, it writes in the neighborhood of a of a Parker Vector or a, uh, a Jinhao 992 or something like that, that uh, those pens I actually enjoy. 
inexpensive pens that I really like. This is the Fountain Pen Revolution Indoor for size comparisons, very similar to the 992 that I just mentioned or a, a Sailor, uh, what's the name of that thing, Compass. This is a Pen BBS and that's their marshmallow pen. That's their $5 pen. I'm going to do a review of that soon, but all very similar in size. This is uh, the Carandash 849. And because a lot of you may have this, may not have those others, there's the Bic Multi Pen. So that gives you an idea on the size comparison. So, neat pen. Uh, for me, kind of one of the coolest things about it is I get to, uh, I, I guess I should call it my eight, around the world in 80 pens. Uh, and so, I don't have 80 pens, but I'm trying to get around the world. And I actually, well, actually, that's not true. I do have 80 pens. Oh my goodness. Well, that's crazy, isn't it? Anyway, uh, as f for me, it's the where it's from that is the coolest thing about it. And then second is that unusual nib that actually writes very well. And I found it an enjoyable pen to write with. So thank you so much to my friend who sent that pen along. That was really cool. And I'm glad to be able to tick Pakistan on my map there. That's really neat. God bless you. It's almost Christmas. And uh, I hope you have a blessed holiday season. See you next time.